Finding voiceover work. I see a lot of mistakes. A lot of times people go out and just post their demo. They scrounge up a demo. A lot of what most people do, especially on the voice acting sites I see, is they'll make a demo and they'll make it themselves and it's not that great. And some of it might be great, but they, they even if it is great, you guys, you just can't go out onto voice acting sites, post it, and then think clients are going to come running to you because that is, that is not how it works. Clients don't come to you looking for work. Very rarely do they do that. Even in my career, I've been doing this for three years for money. And in those three years, I've had maybe a I can count on one hand, maybe two hands, six, seven clients that have come to me on their own to give me work. It's very rare, even for talents in Los Angeles. They don't expect people to just come to them for work unless you're maybe somebody like La Fontaine. And, you know, that that doesn't happen to most people. So marketing is going to be your weapon here. Marketing and going out and looking for the work, looking for the clients, asking them if they need a voice. So this is a business, you guys, and the moment you start treating it as a business is the moment you start to do better at being a voiceover talent. This job is 70% marketing and auditioning and 30% work. So, and when you start out, That means you're going to create an awesome demo and it has to be brilliant. It has to be awesome because if someone else's is better, then they're going to go to that person. And if yours sounds like it was made in a garage, then the clients out there aren't going to choose you. You need to go to voicebank.net or just go out there and look up some of the, the top Los Angeles talent out there. Listen to their demos. Those are the demos you need to be making your demo sound like, you guys. That's why it's very crucial to learn sound design, to learn. If you're going to make this demo yourself, you need to learn how to become a very good sound editor and audio engineer really quick. Otherwise, you're going to need to hire somebody to make your demo. So when starting out, you're going to be starting out for free. I started out doing projects for free, just a few, just to get my feet off the ground, just to get the the feel of what it is like to go through the paces of working for somebody. You need to become adjusted to what it's like to send MP3s, to send WAV files, to adjust the bit rate, to adjust the sample rate, to, to adjust the files, you know, to make everything and do it fast. You need to learn how to do it fast. You got to do it quickly. You got to get the work back quickly. And you need to make that a habit really fast to be fast because there's a lot of people you guys you'd be surprised a lot of clients out there ask voice talents to get work back to them and they're unreliable they'll wait a week they'll wait a few days even most most clients out there when they give you a job especially commercial and radio clients they want that work back within an hour or yesterday that's the best way to put it they want that work back yesterday So, you know, there's a lot of artists and animators out there who ask talent to get work back to them and they're waiting weeks, days, months, and then they have to remind them and they're like, oh, I'm busy with school and blah, 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 blah. And you can't give them that excuse, you guys. They want the voice done so they can get their lip syncing done, so they can get their work done and bam, they just want it fast. And they so they because they're going to need revisions. Not only are they going to need the voiceover, but they're going to need you to fix it and, and, you know, that good stuff. So you're going to be starting free for a lot of the work on small jobs. If you want to start, if you think you're good enough and you want to start delving into the professional world, I would suggest Upwork. Upwork Upwork.com, U-P-W-O-R-K.com is a good place to start for smaller jobs and just to get your feet wet in, in terms of getting paid and working for people. And then once you're done with that and, you, and, you're, and you're basically leveling yourself up and learning more and learning more, you're going to start wanting to go audition for production companies. Look for production companies. Uh, you, can, uh, you can go to places like voice123voices.com if you think you're that competitive enough to get in there and win some auditions. It's all about going, getting those auditions, and ultimately finding your clients, you guys. You need to, this, this process is going to help you find out what you're good at, what people seem to be hiring you for the most, it'll just help you ultimately find your niche through working jobs after job after job and, and just dabbling in audiobooks, in commercials, 
in radio commercials, in corporate business reads, in little things like that you might not even think you'll be voicing over, like the, the voice on an elevator or the voice in a restaurant or a grocery store, um, uh, toys, animations, cartoons, narrations. There's all kinds of stuff out there, guys, and you need to dabble in all of it to figure out which one you like the most, figure out which one clients are hiring you for the most, and that's going to help you bloom. And ultimately, it's all, all it is, at least for the first year, it, first year and a half maybe, is to just figure out who you are. Where do you fit in the voice industry? So that said, when you do start getting work, don't forget about your clients. Don't just do the work and then run away. Don't just work and then forget about your client hoping they're going to come back to you again because that does not happen, you guys. When you get a client, when you get here, I'm here to tell you guys, when you get your first client, put them down on a list. Go to Google, uh, go to Google people or community, what do you call it, uh, community, and make a mailing list quickly. Be on top of that. This is very important, you guys. Make a mailing list somewhere, on somewhere cloud-based online so you don't have to write it down. It's hard to keep up with it on paper, you guys, or a notepad because, you know, your, your computer might get corrupt and then all that stuff gets deleted. Make sure you put this stuff on the cloud. Google somewhere, Google Groups somewhere. Just make a cloud of a mailing list. When you start getting clients, Put them on a mailing list so you can you can send out an email every month, two months to let them know that you still exist because they will forget about you. Clients are busy. Animators are busy. Everyone is busy. Even agents are busy. So you need to be putting these people down on a mailing list, categorize them, uh, people that you've contacted that don't get back to you, but they do give you, they'll, they, most people will say, we don't have a job right now, but we'll keep you in mind. That is what you'll get back a lot of the times because the truth is, is yeah, you're contacting somebody when they really don't need you yet, but you sound amazing, so they'll keep you on file. Put them down in your mailing list as potential clients. You're going to want to email your main clients that you already have that you've worked for and your potential clients, you know, let them know that you still exist because they do forget about you, you guys. They're busy. They they saw your email. It doesn't take but a couple of weeks, a week maybe, for them to just, they're not on your, you're not on their radar anymore. So you need to keep them on a mailing list. Let them know you you still exist. These pe- they, The only way clients will remember you is if you're really, really, really good friends with them, you guys. And that doesn't happen with a lot of clients. So keep that in mind. Agents, not so much a big deal these days, you guys. Agents are slowly kind of moving off to the wayside. I'll tell you what, you guys. I've had one job, maybe two, through the agents that I have earned through these three years of working voiceover. One to two jobs. All the other hundreds of jobs have been through my own entrepreneurial efforts in marketing and auditioning. So you guys that's how you find the work you just have to have an entrepreneurial mind you need to go out there and look for the jobs look for the people it's going to be hard and it's going to be like it's going to it's going to feel like you can't find things half the time but you need that's that's how it's going to be starting off that's almost how it is for me now you do you you always have to push you always have to learn you have to work the most of the effort is looking for jobs. Most of the effort is getting turned down hundreds of times. People saying no. People turning down your auditions many times. That's just a hurdle you have to get over. Don't take it personally. Just do the work. Let it go. And maybe they'll get back to you. And that's basically how you find work as an online voiceover talent. So, and that's where things seem to be moving now. Uh, less and less people are going into studios unless you live in the big city. And uh, it's it, it works, but you have to become a hard-working talent yourself. That's my info for you today, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye. <laughs> <laughs>